Hi and welcome. Today we continue the journey to the updated Bivoua timeline Anno Domini 2023. This chapter is split into two parts. The first, the fundamental notions, introduces topics such as basic angles and relations. The second, geometry applications and examples, enlightens us through a series of simple examples of how manipulating the geometry of the engagement is both simple and fundamental. The key point here is that if we put a bit of effort, eventually all of this theory will become second nature and we will be able to point our aircraft as needed without thinking about it for more than a second. The sketch on the left will accompany us throughout the discussion. Issues, angles and notions we must get familiar with. Let's see the tables now. The first block, top left, is pertinent to the bandit or boogie. Bandit adding and flight path are intuitive. The bandit reciprocal can be calculated in many ways, using a modulo or the plus two minus two rule. Below this, we have the same notions, but relative to the fighter. The fighter reciprocal does not interest us at the moment. Top right, we have the angles and notions related to the intercept triangle created by the intersection of the flight path and the bandit bearing. TA, ATA, DGT are also angles of such a triangle, whereas the cut is the supplementary angle of the DTG. AA is also the supplementary angle of TA. Each of these angles is defined as X to Y. For example, target aspect is bandit reciprocal to bandit bearing. This means that looking at our BDHI or similar instrument, we start from the value of BR, and then we move clockwise or counterclockwise until we find BB. This gives us value, but also a sign, and more on this later. Finally, bottom right, we have more notions. These are not angles, and they will be defined later. Note that some of these angles and terms change depending on the source you are using, as described in the disclaimer in the first chapter. Let's start with the ATA, the antenna train angle. This is defined as the position left or right of the fighter's nose on the radar attack display. The ATA is quite intuitive, uh, just be careful not to confuse it with the bearing. Bearing, from a bra for example, unless specified or contextualized, refers to the north. For this reason, the ATA is also sometimes called relative bearing. The three sketches displayed should be intuitive. The first on the left shows the target 30 degrees on the left, the four 30L left. In the F14, this value appears on the TID as 330. The second sketch is the opposite and the target is ATA 30 right. Note how the ATA does not depend on the target and it does not change instantaneously as it maneuvers. The last image shows the target perfectly on the nose, or the red, in this case ATA is 0. In this video you can see how the ATA is represented in different aircraft. As mentioned, the F-14 statical information display shows it as a BR and has no sign. The sign depends on the number itself, between 0 and 180 is right, otherwise is left. On the B-scope, such as the DDD, the ATA can be read on the abscissa of the display. This is true also for the F-18, F-16, but those displays are far more advanced and can show the antenna train angle in other locations. The target aspect is one of the most important angles. There are several definitions for it, but simply put is how the bandit appears when looked from the perspective of the fighter. It is unfortunately also an angle that instantaneously, solely, depends on the bandit. If the bandit maneuvers, we cannot do anything about it. The only thing we can do is try to adjust our geometry and hopefully, over time, we can affect the target aspect. The sketches provide some examples. If the bandit shows his exhausts, then the target aspect is 180 degrees. Following the arrow, we can find the sign of the aspect, similar to the ATA is either left or right. Note that if you imagine rotating the sketch until the BFP and the FFP superimpose, both ATA and ATA become zero. The target aspect value can be labeled to save time in several ways, depending on in which interval it falls. The chart shows an example. Note that different agencies may use different lexicon or angles. The video shows how different aircraft show the target aspect. The F-14's TID has seen it added fairly recently, a couple of years after the beginning of the early access. Other aircraft, such as the F-16, do not show the target aspect by its supplementary angle, the aspect angle. Before the mentioned update on the F-14, 
the AI Intercept Officer had to manually calculate the target aspect. On the website and the YouTube channel, you can find videos and explanations of the procedure. It's not particularly difficult, and I expect it to be something that the NAVs will later have to relearn and do again on the upcoming F4 Phantom 2. The fun begins where we don't even know the bandit heading, and we have to approximate that value as well. I'm so looking forward to it. There are three types of pursuit. Let's start from the first one, lead pursuit. In this case, the nose of the fighter is pointing in front of the target. It is used on several occasions, such as when we are on collision course, or we need some lead to engage a target with guns from the rear quarter. Pure sees the fighter pointing straight at the bandit. It is used in a certain time of conversions or to position for an RQ Fox 2 shot. It is also very common between new players, especially in b war, but it's a scenario that is often rubbish. We will discuss it later. Lag sees the fighter pointing behind the bandit. As the two previous types, it is used on a few occasions, more often than not within visual range, whereas in our context they are more used to describe the geometry. This slide shows a bunch of definitions, nothing too complicated of course, but they are important. Slide range is the NS definition of range, so to speak. It does in fact invoke the three-dimensional space, as it is defined as the line of sight distance between the two aircraft. Direction of passage is not used often, but can be helpful to the pilot. For example, DOP left to right means that the target is coming from the left and is moving towards the right. DTG and HCA are the same angle, and this is the supplementary angle of the cut. The definition says that this angle represents the number of degrees the fighter needs to turn to be parallel to the bandit. So, simple way to remember it is using the keyword parallel as the answer. So, degrees to go were parallel. The lateral separation describes the amount of room the fighter has to execute certain maneuvers. It is defined as TA times slant range times 100, and it is expressed normally in feet. Due to time and scope constraints, I will not dive into the complex topic of intercept geometry. We are just discussing the basic for the moment. Cut is defined as the angle from the fighter heading to the bandit recip. It is considered an outdated concept in modern documentation, but I find it a great way to label and describe a situation, and to understand how the geometry affects both TA and LS. So, as we said, CAD describes where the noise of the fighter is pointing. If you look at the sketch at the center of the slide, you see that collision course is indicated. This is a special situation, and we'll discuss later, but for now let's take it only as a reference. When the fighter heading points before CC, then we have cut greater than collision course. In this situation, over time, both DTA and LS decrease. Uh, from the perspective of the flight paths, we are throwing our aircraft in front of the nose of the bandit. When cut matches collision course, magic stuff happens. In premise, if co altitude, eventually the two aircraft will smash into each other. Besides this uh, funny detail, uh, collision course is the most efficient way to close the distance with the bandit. Then, lateral separation decreases, but the TA does not change. In fact, we can say that CC captures TA. Moreover, if co speed, TA becomes equal to ATA, but opposite in sign, as the intercept triangle described before becomes an isosceles. When the cut is less than collision, the LS decreases, but TA increases. The utility of this situation is better explained when the geometry is discussed in greater detail but it's beyond the purpose of this series. If the fighter points at the bandit's reciprocal, cut equals zero. And this situation is often called zero cut. This is another magic situation. This is in fact the second key situation we should become very familiar with. In premise, LS does not change, so it is captured, and the TA increases, but that's not all, and more details will be added soon. Finally, if the fighter goes on its way, with the nose not pointing at the bandit, we have the so-called cutaway. This is the only case when LS and TA both increase, and it's useful, uh, for example, to make room uh, via lateral separation or to try with mass with the hostile's intercept. So before moving forward, a last quick look at zero cut. As mentioned, there is a lot more to it, and is really fascinating. In premise, the situation allows us to determine immediately TA as it matches the ATA, and also we can predict how the angle will change over time. As you can see in the sketch, as the range decreases, the angles increase. 
In particular, the angles double as the range halves. This gives us a tool to eyeball out the geometry we look over time. Closure rate is one of the simplest concepts and the 1-1 level for every F14 player. Therefore, I will not go too deep into this concept here. Just remember that eye closure is great for IPRF radars and it should be carefully managed to ensure that the target does not fall within the OG9 blind zones, thus breaking contact. Low PRF, medium PRF, or radar supporting interleave mode are less susceptible. But VC is still a fundamental parameter as it can be, for example, a symptom of bad geometry. Uh, it can help to ID the target and definitely affect missile employment. The collision course has been mentioned earlier, but it's one of the magic concepts that must be become second nature. Drift is concept-wise somewhat like the opposite of CC. When on collision, in fact, the fighter and the bovie do not move away from their relative position in space. And ultimately, they will collide if caught alt. If the two aeroplanes are not on CC then, looking from the fighter's perspective, we will notice the bogey moving towards the left or the right. This continuous and progressive movement is inversely proportional to the range, is called drift. So, simply put, when there is CC, there is no drift, and vice versa. Drift can occur for two reasons. The first is intuitive. If the fighter turns, the bogey's position relative to the fighter changes. This is called turn drift. The second can be more subtle and is a symptom of lack of collision. This is called the intercept drift. And combined, these two types of drift create the so-called displayed drift. Lastly, note that when on collision, the antenna train angle is relabeled CATA, CATA, acronym for Collision Antenna Train Angle. This video shows the DDD of an F-14 as I demonstrate the turn drift, as I command Iceman to turn. And now you can see the intercept drift. My aircraft is not maneuvering, but the target's relative position is changing. Lastly, when I'm non collision, or very close to, the target moves vertically down towards the bottom of the B scope. The same applies to any other B scope, such as the displays on the F 16 and F 18. Lastly, all the basic documentation I found, whether it be Navy or Air Force, consider the case of the boogie and the fighter being co speed. This scenario makes everything extremely easy, as the intercept triangle we mentioned before, the one that defined by BB, FFP, and BFP, that contains TA, TA, and DTG, is isosceles. However, there are procedures which I mostly made up or discovered myself that allow to easily set up CC even when the two aircraft are not co-speed. I also made a study to find out the patterns and the peculiarity of this type of intercept by reverse engineering, so to speak, the vectors displayed on the tactical information display. However, this is beyond the purpose of this video, where you can find a dedicated article on Flying Wire. So a quick and funny parenthesis before closing. As I started studying various docks, I noticed how US Navy and US Air Force uh, use similar concepts, but not the same angles. Each agency uses the supplementary angles of the other. The Navy uses TA, and used to use the least CAT. The Air Force uses AA, and I suppose is still using DTG. Odd, isn't it? Anyway, it would be interesting to go deeper into the historical and practical reasons why they have different approaches, but this is a topic for another video. And this is the end of chapter 2.1. If you're new to this and you're very confused, fear not. Chapter 2.2 will show you a series of practical examples using different tools, some of them I bet you won't expect. Thanks for watching and take care.